Hey guys, how's it going? So today we're going to be doing some perennial planting. You can see this gorgeous color right behind me. A huge gator load of beautiful perennials. So we have three different varieties that are going to three different locations in our garden. Check all of these out. Very different shades of pink we're dealing with here. I mean, you know, you look at something like this. This is a brand new echinacea coming out next year, 2023. But you put this color of pink up next to this color. Boy, they look wildly different. Like this one's so much more cool in its undertones than this one is. This one's got a lot more warmth to it, but they're all gorgeous. So this one is a double coated raspberry beret, double echinacea. Aren't these gorgeous and big. So the flowers can reach up to four inch diameter and they grow about 20 inches tall, two feet wide. Echinacea do really well here for us. I know they do well for a lot of you guys too in a real full sun area. They attract pollinators. Um, I think they're resistant to deer even. We don't deal with deer in our garden. Like I know a lot of you guys have really intense deer pressure. In fact, we've only seen deer in our space. They weren't even actually in our, in our garden. They were in the neighbor's field. And that was five or six years ago, like the first or second year we were in this place. So anyway, uh, there are a zone four through eight. And the thing I like so much about echinacea, like ours in the garden aren't blooming yet. Uh, these, you know, have been grown on to bloom a little bit sooner. Uh, but when they're in their natural rhythm, they usually start blooming about midsummer, and then they provide color through the whole season. It's not something, a uh, plant that I ever deadhead because I like the seed heads, the way they look are really beautiful. They provide forage for wildlife and they look beautiful in the wintertime too. So they just provide so much color through that, like kind of dog days of summer and then through the rest of the season. I just love them. And I think they're going to look gorgeous tucked in over here on the west side, maybe near some of that purple blooming penstemon. So we'll get some early color from the penstemon and then these can pick up and be some color later on. Next, we have another salvia. So we recently planted, in fact, uh, right here, we planted the uh, pink profusion, which I love. This one is called Back to the Fuchsia. I've not ever planted this one before, and it looks very different from the pink profusion in that the bloom spikes are much thicker, like just the diameter of these much thicker. Um, and they've got a little bit larger of a growth habit. And you can just tell that based on like looking at this versus looking at, you know, the pink profusion, which, you know, we're kind of far from them, but anyway. Also, these have a lighter colored calyx than the peak profusion. So they just have a different, a different vibe to them. But let me tell you what, if you want a pollinator attracting plant, this is the type to put in your garden. Any kind of salvia, any kind of veronica. I mean, they are just loaded all of the time. In fact, these were sitting on the ground near the greenhouse this morning. When I went to pick them up and put them here in the gator, they were covered in honeybees, just covered absolutely wonderful and i've got a few sitting up there as well we're going to do a large drift out in the south garden with these these are a zone three through eight just incredibly tough and they are also resistant to deer and rabbits and then peeking up in the back there we've got an astilbe called montgomery aren't these phenomenal look at how gorgeous that is so they grow two feet by two feet. Uh, it's still be in our area, do tend to want to be protected a little bit from the harsh afternoon sun. Although like the tag says, sun or shade, in a shadier location, you won't get quite as much bloom production as you would in a sunnier spot. But I think I've got a really great spot right over here. So underneath this lilac, which I'm going to try to save, we actually have our irrigation system runs a flush every day to flush any sediment or whatever out. So this whole area stays really moist, which this plant also appreciates a lot. So you can see that I haven't put much in here. In fact, the lilac will probably be happier if we've got plants in here that'll utilize more of the moisture. So I'm hoping, let me just tuck this one right in here. Oh, I think that's so pretty. And even if it doesn't have as many blooms as it could out in the sun, I think the deep glossy green leaves are beautiful, contrasting the lamium down below. I do need to do some cleanup on the bottom of this lilac here, but I think that's gonna be a really pretty look. Let's grab another one real quick. I'm gonna have to check with Aaron on where all the irrigation is over here, because you know, since there is that flush, I know that there's some kind of tubes or pipes in here somewhere. But these are also pollinator attractors in terms of bees and they're resistant to deer and rabbits as well. Look at that. This spot just needed it. We do plan on finishing the sprinter hedge too this year, possibly. I mean, 
kind of nice to have a little break in it too. Okay guys, let's just get all this planting done and then I'll tour you through, show you how it all ended up looking. done and I'm really excited about each one of these plants. I think they all look really good where they ended up. So there's the astelbe. So, so beautiful in this location. I mean, whether or not we end up doing the boxwood hedge, which you can see I never got around to trimming it this spring. However, the weather is so nice, I could probably still do it. But either way, if we decide to finish the boxwood hedge, I'll dig up the lamium and move that in because I love lamium. I think that brings such a bright color to this area but we'll still be able to see those bloom spikes peeking up above the boxwoods. These are really good for cut flowers too. So, I mean, just another reason why to grow a still be just awesome. And it was surprisingly easy to dig right here. I didn't run into any tubes or pipes and only one hole had a little root in it. I was expecting to find lilac roots everywhere and I just didn't. So. Yeah, pretty easy planting. And the echinacea ended up all in the same spot right over here, so you can kind of see a little bit of a straight on view. We've got a, a viburnum in the back and then penstemon and then roses, oregano. Let me walk down the pathway this way so you can see the color from a little bit more of a distance. Entering in the west side, you can see all the color additions this spring and we'll probably be able to see it a little bit easier once we get a little closer on it, but I can see that saturated deep pink down there and I love it. Love, love it. So we've got the purple Veronica here. I'll do something probably blue, like maybe lamb's ear in between. I think that would be a really nice kind of grounding bold leaf plant. But I ended up putting all of the echinacea in one spot. So there are 10 of them. I spaced them roughly two feet apart, which they grow about that, maybe a little bit less. So we should have a nice big patch of the echinacea right here. So excited about that. To the left of it here, we do have a Mary Rose David Austin, and then we have Drops of Jupiter oregano, which have a very dark kind of mauve pink bloom, which are just starting to produce buds right now. Love this bright pop of green right here though. I think it's so refreshing. Then Stand By Me Lavender Clematis, which first year it always kind of looks like this. So if you plant yours and it's kind of like well, a little sad looking, it, the next year it comes up so nice and robust. And it's just because I didn't have the staking system in place. You'll notice that I did 
end up getting a whole bunch more of these round stakes from Gardener Supply. We'll link them down below because they look pretty. They're heavy duty metal and um, yeah, they're super functional and easy to use. So these will be in place next year as these break dormancy and start coming up. They can just grow, fill in, you know, these uh, trellises and it'll keep them all upright which I let these just kind of flop on the ground for the first couple of weeks after I planted them. And you know, right behind the echinacea, I have the Midnight Masquerade Penstemon, which I adore. It's got a very cool lavender color, and I was unsure if I liked those two colors together. I actually kind of do. However, this one will just be maybe wrapping up its bloom season while this one's just getting going. So they'll overlap a little bit, but it'll be nice to have two successions of color, one very different from the other in this spot. Things are just shaping up so nice over here. So now we need to head out to the South Garden to look at the salvia. Oh, look at it, it's still be echinacea, so pretty. Okay, we're just at the opening of this grass path area. You can see the nepeta over here is looking gorgeous. And you know, we planted the uh, Heliopsis here and the Agastache. Look at that salvia. Oh my goodness. Oh, look at that beautiful thing. So we've got some really pretty Baptisia over here called, what is that called? Yellow meringue maybe? Boy, how come I cannot remember? But it's just phenomenal. Look at that. We've got more of the drops of Jupiter oregano and the Stand By Me Lavender Clematis. And then this nice big drift of salvia which will just be a nice big thick kind of block out here. We've got a blue shadow Father Gella bottle brush right there and I'm gonna do something lower right in front. So I, I kinda started digging holes right up next to the grass and it just looked way too tall to be out closer to the grass. Maybe up against the oregano was why it looked so tall. So I decided to bump a few back but I think that's gonna be a really pretty pocket of pink out here, a cooling aspect. You can see we still haven't mulched, in fact, this will help a lot. Let me show you our mulch. Last year, you know, we did wood chips out here because they were free. Free is nice and it did cover up all the dust we had going on out here. Look at this over here. Just delivered, this is compost. So this is what we're gonna be going over all of the wood chips with here hopefully this next week. Look at how beautiful. So it can help feed the soil. It'll probably help speed up the decomposition uh, process of the wood chips as well but that will contrast the plants beautifully. I can't wait. And I am thankful that the wood chips are here because they are helping keep dust down, keeping weeds at bay, keeping moisture in the soil a little bit more, but it does make it look kind of dry, especially some of these older wood chips. These are fresher, these are older, and they're just kind of like white, blonde. And then we do have a bunch of soil hanging out from areas where we've planted things. So just imagine that with a nice dark mulch everywhere. Oh, it's gonna be beautiful. And here's the road view of the salvia. Eventually this will be so full, you won't be able to see the uh, backside of the bed from the driveway, uh, but it looks really pretty right now. And that is gonna be it for today. The breeze is starting to pick up a little bit. In fact, we're supposed to have storms tonight, a cold front coming in. We had um, high temps last week of 89, which for this time of year is not bad, I'm not complaining, but tomorrow's high is 57, which is awesome. The next day is like 60, and then we're gonna warm back up gradually, but I'm welcoming all the cool temperatures that want to come our way. And the moisture, we got a ton of rain last night and I'm supposed to get rain tonight, tomorrow, and possibly the next day. It's just wonderful. Plants are loving it, I'm loving it. Thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.